We're getting ready to go for the shootout now. And the first of the cars beginning to line up is one of the most modern machines that could be very, very rapid up here. The Rimac Nevera, this all electric supercar that uh, is being driven by Miro Suzunche. And let's see what he can do. He's part of the development of this car. He's done a, a huge amount of work on it. And off the line it goes. It's able to do 0 to 60 in 1.7 seconds. It's that kind of machine. And already it is rapid through the first section. 4.49 seconds to the 100 metres. And then up through into the next stage. Yep, so blazing underneath the bridge, now kissing a little bit of glass. You can see that the ABS is kicking in as it throws it into Malcolm Corner, a corner where we see plenty of cars ending up in the hay bales as it charges all the way up the hill now, a dab on the brakes just to get the front end in, going past the wall there, which can really make you feel quite claustrophobic. As you can see again, ABS kicking in to bring it up now up heading up towards the start line to set our first time in the shootout and i tell you what this is going to be a pretty good time so yeah 49.32 that is truly competitive we've seen a, a 48.5 as the fastest of the weekend so far but we'll just have to see how this goes now this is going to be an interesting run yes yeah, so Raquel Ray now, a very very talented female driver loads of experience as she storms now through the first corner getting a little bit out of shape it is quite and kicking up plenty of dust there, kissing the edge of the grass as she storms up past the packed grandstands. She was fourth in class this year at Le Mans, just missing out on the podium in class. They, they did a fantastic job. They had a bit of poor luck with the car just towards the end, but she is putting it together here. Let's see. Uh, not as quick in the sector as uh, we saw from the Rimac a moment ago, but not far off. Yeah. Uh, second down. Yeah, I mean, she's heading up through the speed trap now and she's topped the speed trap compared to the river but I don't think it's quite going to match the pace as she's going to bring it over the line to probably set a time yet into the, the 50 seconds of the 50... 4.2. Yeah, so Rahel Frey goes second fastest for the moment. As uh, now look at this, this is a this is an amazing beast. Uh, this is the McLaren that we uh, have seen going up this hill already. The Solus GT, and uh, it's actually Marvin Kirchhofer who's in the car this time. So we shall see just how rapid it will be. Again, this is another supercar with a mid-engined 5.2-litre V10. Let's watch it as it go, ready to get off the line. I think this could well be right up there. It's a central seat cockpit as well, as a racing driver loves. Absolutely, and it launches off the line as we easily look at its first 100 metre, and it's not quite as fast as the Rimac, but it certainly has got the pace to charge up the hill. And it's, we've got a glimpse of a fantastic onboard here of Rob Bell taking it up earlier. 829 brake horsepower as it steams past. Our Comedy Brock slams onto the brake through Malcolm Corner, takes it to the big gentleman. You can see how dirty it is there, Ben, kicking up the dust. Yeah, you've got to be so careful with track limitations here. There are no curbs to go on. You can end up, and you can end up in that wall too. We've seen cars hit that flip wall before, but it was beautifully done. Marvin Kirchhofer is actually driving it very, very well, and the sector times are looking good. This is going to be a very rapid time coming up. 45.34, that is a very quick time, fastest so far. Yeah, it's not quite the record that we saw last year from Max Chilton of 39 seconds, but I tell you what, Ben, I think that's going to be... That could possibly be the fastest time we may see go up the hill today. It's a very, very competitive time. It is indeed. Right, now you're going to see an older Formula One car. Always lovely to see. Uh, this is the 1976 McLaren Cosworth. And many of you will have heard these Cosworth engines over the years in Formula One. They have a very characteristic sound to them. And Michael Lyons, who's a very successful historic racer, uh, raced Formula Ford and Formula Renault in his times in British GT, so he's done a lot. Let's see what he can do in the McLaren. Yeah, beautiful sound as he takes it through Malcolm Ben, a very experienced racer in this type of machinery. He had many, many wins in historic racing, so knows exactly how to drive these vehicles and has experience of racing them up the hill as well. He sends it through very, very close to the hay bells on the right-hand side there. And the storm's coming up to the line now. It won't be fastest, but it's not a bad time. It's a very good time, and he's only just missed out. 46.89 is the time that he's done it in. So that's just over a second off 
uh, what we've seen so far from Marvin Kirchhofer. So very, very impressive. Now, Olaf Monte, who is the man behind the organization that creates this car, uh, very experienced, but uh, not perhaps the sort of top, top young drivers. He's somebody who, who has been responsible for building these cars, making them work. And this is a special Porsche 911 GT2 RS Club Sport 25. They're only building a few of them and, uh, and a good initial run. Let's see whether it's going to be fully on the pace. Yeah, just a little lock up there. We had a quick look out of our commentary box window heading into Malkin Bend. And actually, a Porsche was second fastest going up the hill last year with a 45.5. And it's a, not a bad intermediate one. Eight, maybe not quite as fast as the fastest time. A couple of seconds off as he heads up the hill now. We're kind of have a little look as he goes across the line. And it is a 51.4. Yep, so that's not uh, quite the pace that they've been looking for. But I tell you what we've got to watch now is Adam Smalley, because Adam has been a pace setter all weekend. This is the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup. Away goes Adam, the 22-year-old from Lancashire, the karting champion, champion in Ginettas. You know him well. He's a great driver. Yeah, I've had many times where I've sat next to him in a Ginetta Junior back in the day, and I was always poorly on looking to the to my seat. Last year he set a 47.9 and we saw that on board for him last year storming up the hill as he takes it just a little bit of inside grass there and kisses the outside grass and this is fantastic on board there. The sector time is good. It's right in the mix. 21.6 is not the fastest we've seen but he's definitely on the game here isn't he? Yeah you can see making plenty of corrections going up the hill getting ever so close to those hay bales on either side and he's going to storm across the line of 47.4. 47.4 for Adam Smalley. So it's not quite the fastest as yet. It's still Marvin Kirchhofer who has got that pace currently, having set it just uh, a few times ago. They are all pushing on, trying to get the best that they can possibly get. But it is the McLaren Solus GT which is currently the fastest. Right, now then, Adrian Formo heading up the hill. We're riding on board and once again, getting a really interesting view on a on a rally car this time it's not raining today and ford puma world rally car oh you see how a rally car is always happy going off the track now it was Ot tanak of course who set of such a rapid pace in the ford but let's see what adrian former could do yeah as he screams through and this was a great lap that uh, this car performed in really really tricky conditions on the Friday and you can see the absolute concentration on Adrian's face as he's steaming up the hill. Yeah into the last section now uh, he's done 36.3 into the sector so he's up there but I'm not sure it's going to be quite enough because it won't have quite the sheer horsepower 49.47 seconds so, yeah, it's good, but not quite enough. No, I think the rally car needed a little bit of rain as we're going to see yet another rally car take up the hill. They were very competitive, obviously, in the tricky conditions that we saw on Friday. So it's the Hyundai i20N Rally 1 Hybrid that uh, is going to be heading up the hill now. Yeah, and it's the great driver, Thierry Vogel, who is driving it and sliding it with great style. Let's see how this goes. 500 horsepower in one of these uh, Rally 1 hybrid machines. The World Rally Championship now uses hybrid uh, machines, and Hyundai have had uh, eight podiums in the World Rally Championship so far this year. Looking good so far, too. Oh, beautifully done as he kicks up a load of dust, which streams into the grandstand. I don't want to be the car that's going out next behind him. You can see a dab on the brakes and gets ever so close to the wall as he's heading up to the, st the finish line now, Ben. He's right up against the bales too, isn't he? Just rubbing the car alongside them. Let's see what the time as he comes over the line, is it? It's not going to be enough. Let's see. Across the line he goes. It's 52.7. So he has missed out a little bit. I have to say, uh, Adrian Formo, uh, the other rally driver, definitely a bit quicker on that run. Now, this, this could be one. Jake Hill is in this wonderful 
Nissan Skyline. And I can tell you there is a huge amount of power. It is four-wheel drive. The Nissan Skyline GTI, it's a classic racer that had huge success in its early years. And it's been driven by Jake Hill, front runner in the British Touring Cars, puts a wheel on the grass, but he's kept his foot on the throttle. He has kept his foot on the throttle, currently sitting P3 in the British Touring Car Championship. He's had great success in this car, winning the Spa Classic in 2021 and also winning the 2021 Touring Car Cup in a shootout with this liveried car is a beautiful car and I wouldn't want to be a passenger next to Jay driving it so effortlessly up the hill. He's very much in the mix, but I'm not sure it's going to be quite enough. The second intermediate has come through at 35.7. He's still trying to get a little more pace. 48.818 uh, as he goes over the line. It's not quite enough. And we still got that pace that was set by Marvin Kirchhofer. 45.34. That is still the target. It. But I think that's a fantastic effort from Jake Hill, really ragging the campaign, and he really, really does enjoy driving the car. And this is back to now looking at machinery that Jake is usually used to driving, <laughs> a British touring car, as we're going to have Rory Butcher now heading up the hill. Yeah, so Rory Butcher is, as you say, one of Jake's rivals from British touring cars. He's in the Toyota Corolla. Uh, his best uh, finish this year, he's had a second place at Snetterton in this car. He's been with uh, Toyota now for the last three years. Uh, he's got to keep it going nice and smooth. But, of course, touring car limitations uh, on the rules, you don't have quite the same power that some of the vehicles we've got out there have. No, you don't, and, and that's why they are put into their... their batches um, so we can make it a little bit fairer for, for those that are trying to compete as you can see Rory just a dab of the brakes and easing the touring car into the corner foot now flat to the floor as he heads it up as you said not going to quite match the pace that we currently have seen but it's not going to be too bad Ben. Let's have a look he did 38.4 in the second sector 51.6 so it goes just over the 50 second mark so not as quick as Jake but of course Jake in a much more powerful even though it's an older touring car uh, that had so much success in the late 80s and early 90s and I know I was talking to Jake earlier and they they've turned up the turbocharger a lot for today's run uh, he said it was about 700 horsepower it might be even more than that <laughs> uh, but it hasn't been quite enough because at the moment it's one of the newest cars uh, the, the, we've got here at Goodwood this weekend. It is the McLaren Solus GT of Marvin Kirchhofer, who has set the pace. And now, of course, all of those front runners are now watching the screens at the top of the hill, waiting to see how they go and whether they're going to be threatened. Adam Smalley there, who's done a, a great job as well. Uh, always competitive here at the Festival of Speed. Yes, yeah, certainly are. They're all eagerly watching on as they await and so is everybody in the crowd really enjoying the atmosphere and seeing these wonderful cars be put through their paces kicking up plenty of, of dust on their way up and setting some very impressive times i have to say marvin kirchhofer's pace uh, setting it at 45.34 is so good are we going to see anybody able to beat that don't forget there are still some very rapid drivers to come travis pastrana of course who we've seen competitive not just this weekend but in the past and that could be exciting to see and uh, justin law who's been successful here several times in fact it looks like it is travis pastrana who's coming up to the line now alice so this is always one to watch one of my favorite cars the 1983 subaru GL family Huckster, as as you'll see when he stamps on the brakes, almost everything sort of flips up and gives us a wave. And this is going to be an incredible lap. And if we've had the chance to watch any of the stream over the weekend, you will see that he gives it absolutely everything heading up the hill. Here we go. Pastrana's away. The runner up here in 2021. He was fifth here last year. Let's see what he can do with this fantastic machine. I don't think he'll be doing 360s this time as he did that little display early on today. He's going for the sheer pace. Yeah, chucking up more than just grass there. Load of dirt. Now he watch this as he stamps on the brake and sends it in to Malcolm Gordon, kicking up plenty of dust and nearly losing the rear on the exit. Did he hear the cheers from the crowd? I tell you what, his sector times are one of the fastest in that first sector. The acceleration off the line was truly remarkable. This is a great run from Travis Pastrana. Can he beat that 45.3 second? I know he's not going to quite do it. The clock is ticking away. Over the line he goes 46.3. Wow, and it's got a round of 
of applause from the crowds around here, and so he should. What an incredible time from Travis Pastrana. He's going to be right up there again. He hasn't still quite managed to beat Marvin Kachoffer, though. Uh, that was so close. And as you say, the style with which he went for it, that was impressive. And I, uh, the fans, I know you all loved it, as you could see just how much he was sliding to the very edge, but still keeping it going in the cor correct direction. An absolute pleasure to watch. That really, really was. And actually, it didn't look like it was going to be a good lap time with the amount of sideways he was getting, the dust and dirt that he was kicking up. But then we were glued to the timing screens and then we saw these, these sectors pop up and we thought, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, but just lost out in the end there. Well, let's see if anything is going to change. The McLaren Solus GT is the fastest here, and I think that could be very difficult to beat indeed. Even though it wasn't the fastest into the first little 100 metres, it then picked up so much pace in terms of... We, we have a speed trap, and it was very impressive there as well, one of the fastest through the speed traps. Let's go to Ed Foster at the top of the hill. Well, what a fantastic shootout that was. I'm joined by the Duke of Richmond and Michael, you came in third there. Uh, it didn't look like you left much out there. Oh yeah, we were trying. I mean, Travis's lap looked pretty impressive at the end there, but yeah, that's the first time I've had it hop just before the Flint wall. So I knew I was trying there. There's a couple of little bits as always, but yeah, really enjoying hammering that thing up here. It's a fantastic day, isn't it? It was a cracking effort, right? Um, if you follow me, James, we're gonna uh, go, go down here. We're gonna have to a quick walk, we'll find Travis. Um, I've never seen such commitment on the hill. You look a bit weak at the knees, Travis. Uh, the last turn, I, I was like, I can do it flat, I can do it flat. And it started going sideways. I'm like, this is going to be the biggest off ever on Goodwood Hill. <laughs> no, I tell you what, I just want to thank uh, all the guys at Vermont Sports Car and Subaru. Um, this is so much fun to be here. So many legends. Um, I know that McLaren uh, Space Shuttle uh, definitely, definitely has it. The McMurtry is phenomenal. But to be up here in an 83 wagon playing Danger Zone in the, <laughs> the eight track, I just, man, this is uh, just an amazing time. So uh, thank you everyone for the opportunity. And we, we gave it all we had. That's, I think, the fastest I've gone up the hill, but uh, there's not much left. <laughs> it was an amazing time. Well done. Thank you. Right, James, we'll go back up here. Um, and Marvin, congratulations. That was an absolutely fantastic climb. 45.34, you must be delighted. I'm, I'm super delighted. I'm actually quite speechless because I did not expect that. Um, as I said, it's my first time here in Goodwood. Uh, I have to say, first of all, amazing run from, um, from Travis Pastrana. I was like, it was just lovely to watch. Like the car control he has, it's, uh, yeah, absolutely hey, stunning. Congratulations. But thank you what so much. Result. Thank you so much. I, I'm speechless. Wonderful like, drive. Thank you so much. What was fabulous car. Well done. Thank you. Well, well done. Well that's done. Back to the guys in the factory. They built that car. I had the honor to drive it. And yeah, sure, thank course. you so much. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It was an, um, a fantastic effort. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. So Marvin has been recognized as the winner of the Festival of Speed Hill Climb. And the young German racer who's had success in German Formula 3 and former Masters in the past now drives for McLaren, and he's won ahead of Travis Pastrana, who probably put on the most dramatic display of all. Michael Lyons was third, Adam Smalley fourth, ahead of Jake Hill. Uh, the Rimac Nevera was in sixth place ahead of the, the rally car, the Ford Puma, and then we had the Porsche Toyota, and Hyundai uh, finishing in 10th place. But it was all about Marvin Kirchhofer. He did a stunning job. Yeah, an absolutely incredible lap. Like they said there, everyone was glued to the screen and we've got more cars now which are going to continue their batch of shootout. We've got the Ferrari 488 Challenge there, the little stream up the hill, very popular race car this is. Yeah, let's see how this goes. It's going to be pretty rapid, but I think uh, we've just got to calm down a little bit and see how quickly these cars are going to be going right now. Andrew Morrow, this is, in the Ferrari 488. And the 488 in various versions has had a lot of success. It won the Spa 24 hours a couple of years ago, and they have this uh, challenge trophy now uh, where you get Ferrari drivers all competing against each other in similar cars of one make series. Let's see how times are going. Pretty good uh, stint, 22.6 seconds. So he's actually doing a good job, isn't he? Yeah, very good job. And you can see the little dab on the brakes there. You see how the car just pitches into the final 
technically the final braking zone it should be at least for this car maybe not so much if you're travis in his subaru as it steams now across the line so the time that he has set is a 49.88 anyone who gets under 50 seconds is very very impressive indeed well now here's a very different kind of beast of course uh, about to come up the hill and uh, this is uh, that's what I love about seeing with all of this. You get totally different machinery from the modern era to the old era as well. And you're going to see the Rolls-Royce, the electric Rolls-Royce, heading up the hill, and we'll see what kind of time it can do. Quite quiet, of course, in terms of power. Yeah, the Spectra just kicking up some dust there. And each of their these cars are sort of in their individual classes. As we mentioned earlier, so we'll see the Spectre now come into Malcolm Bend. You can see how much it dives going in and it screams, the wheels screeching as it kicks up the dust and continues on up the hill bend. Does indeed, and uh, the times are looking quite impressive. The speeds, obviously, in a big car like this, that's the challenge in a way. You don't have much space to, to use a, a kind of racing line very much. You've just got to squeeze it between all those bales, haven't you? Yeah, you certainly have. And the reason why these cars are in separate batches is just to make sure it's a level playing field for all as it comes across the line and, and a respectful time there from, from Joseph with a 56.6. Yeah, that is good indeed. And uh, as you say, every little group will have its own battle so we can still enjoy the competitiveness of all of this. We'll see some of the older cars from the 1920s and 30s, as well as the most recent super touring cars like this Ferrari Roma with Edward Norfolk at the wheel, Grand Touring 2 plus 2 Coupe, front engined memories of the, uh, the 250 GTO in the way that it's been designed, but absolutely a, a truly modern machine here. Yeah, and as you can just see the hazard lights flickering on there, just meaning the ABS really is kicking in and they, William is absolutely pushing the limit to this Ferrari Roma as it's coming up across the line now. I'll have a little look at what time it's going to do. Might it's going to be close to the Bentley, is it? It is a 56.3, so ever so slightly slower. Yeah, that's right. So not quite there, but uh, as you say, only a tiny difference. So now, as I said, you've got some of the, the, the group, the pre-war racers group, this is. So uh, obviously they're in their own competition. They're not going to be competing in quite the same way as the, the cars that we saw uh, going up the hill just a little while ago. But nonetheless, you're going to see some great fun in terms of driving style. When you look at the narrowness of the tyres that they're having to run on as well, all from the era, it's a very different story. Yeah, and this is, if you haven't had the chance to come to the members' meetings, or you get to go to the Revival as well, you get to see these cars actually racing side by side on track, and actually they produce some pretty incredible racing and a hugely competitive racing as well. So it's great to see them going up the hill. And this car, of course, is powered by synthetic fuel. And it just sounds just as good as well. It does. It's lovely to see. It raced at the very first Le Mans in 1923. It finished fourth overall with fastest lap. Well, it hasn't got fastest high hill climb today, 90.97. Uh, but nonetheless, they've done a great job with it. Yeah, they certainly have, as now we can see. This is actually a rapid one to keep an eye on. This is the uh, Hyundai Elantra NTCR and Mikael Ascona, who's a, a very rapid driver. Yeah, very quick. You see, kicking up plenty of dust. That does seem to be the fastest line to get very close to the paint there. Now, this is David Brabham behind the wheel of the Jaguar. Someone who's very experienced of going up the hill here and a successful racer as well then. Oh, yes, he's won Le Mans. He's, he's had GT victories at Le Mans with Aston Martin. He's won the Spa 24-hour race. He was Japanese GT champion way back in the 1960s. He can drive anything. David Brabham, and uh, so, yeah, he's doing a pretty good sector so far. Yeah, he certainly is, and actually is pre looking pretty handy out of our commentary box window as he gets ever so close to the hay bales there. That de definitely, how close can you get? Not much more from David Brabham there, and it's just a beautiful car, and it's great to see these type of cars with their famous liveries that are still shining upon these cars. He goes across the finish line now and records a 53.2. 
Yeah, 53.2, so just outside the 50-second mark, which is where you've got to try and just get below, if at all possible. But not, lovely to see that very classic Jaguar heading out and going on to the circuit. So, um, Aaron Morgan is next out in a, a McLaren, so this is a more modern version. It's not going to think, be quite as rapid as the other McLaren that we saw the pace on, but, of course, this is in a different class because that other one in the absolute top class. And this is a car that is designed for, for racing, but very much built around a road car. Yeah, it is, and they've really tried to make sure that they stick to that as it slows down, goes through nice and gently through Malcolm Corner and the famous Brit livery on there as well. Now steams up the hill, crowd eagerly watching on, and it's been a fantastic show so far for, for this crowd today. It has, and uh, of course we're going to see a lot more of McLarens coming up the hill as we celebrate uh, with them. 60 years since since the company was created by Bruce McLaren, who created it as a, a racing company, but in more recent years it is both uh, a very important racing company, but also producing wonderful road cars and supercars and track cars. And so not quite uh, up there, but... Uh, indeed within the group that will be interesting we'll get the final sort of group performance uh, figures right at the end and we can try and see who's where so here's another mclaren but uh, this is a formula one car the m29 2 this wasn't the best of the mclarens they ever produced and it was at a time uh, it does 55 7 6 that's still a very good time um, and it's lovely to see that those very familiar colors yeah it is and i just love that it's just such an incredible living and now we hear we see Garrett Owen going up in what you call the, the Babs car. I gather the uh, the timing won't necessarily work on this one because the, the start was slightly different. It may have been that he had to do a rolling start with a vehicle like that, quite possibly. And uh, there's an Oflascona. That's that's rather lovely to see as well. This is a, another classic rally car. We've got a, a few of those here. The Oflascona 400, uh, a car that won the World Rally Championship in 1982 with Walter Roll who was uh, one of the great drivers. Ari Vartman won the Safari in one of these as well. And uh, Paul Gunniston, who owns and is driving the car up the hill. I think for us, and you see a car like this, it's not so much about the, the, the sheer pace, but how lovely it is to see one of these rear-wheel drive cars that sort of followed in the footsteps of the Ford Escorts. No, it's beautiful. And a lot of these cars have such an incredible history behind them. and. As you can see, the lean going through Malcolm Corner there as it comes up the hill, a beautiful opal. And, and, and again, there's so much history, and that's what I like about Goodwood, is you can really get up close and personal to these cars and speak to the team and the drivers that, that even have had the chance to drive the cars and really dive into the history. Yes, they have, and uh, I think this is a lovely opportunity for Paul to take it over the line once again. Uh, in just a moment, we shall see him. Let's see what he's done uh, across. It's not going to be quite as competitive as some of the fastest cars, but it's still a good effort. 62.86. And the uh, Mark 1 Jaguar is out there at the moment, Grant Williams. Ooh. He's sliding past our commentary position, so we've just had a bit of a, a screech in our ears. But it's oh, there it is, all going well. Uh, suddenly the wheels came off it the other day. Uh, thankfully, nobody got hurt. And uh, he's now having a, a, another run up the, the hill climb. Yeah, sorry about the ooh there, Ben, because he was fully sideways going through Vulcan Corner. And I thought, no, keep it out of the hay bales and great car control there. Now we see something totally different. We see uh, one of the NASCARs, Chevrolet Camaro, going out and a roar as it comes, blasting under the bridge and heading up towards our commentary box. Yeah, the very experienced Ed Berrier, who's uh, 60, in his early 60s now, um, and he's come here to Goodwood on a number of occasions. In the, this time he's using the Chevy Camaro, not a car that he has competed in, but a, a car that uh, was on to the NASCAR scene in 2022, uh, the Gen 7 Cup, so that was sort of a new time where they, they brought in some changes to NASCAR. Uh, instead of having four or five wheel nuts, they've gone to one wheel nut now on NASCAR, a bit like Formula One, that, uh, that was a bit of a change. Uh, they have rear cameras as well. Joey Logano won the first race, um, and uh, it was a bit of a pre-season clash to all of that, but that was a nice run by Ed Berrier. Uh, lovely to see one of the many NASCARs that we've got coming up the hill. Yeah, we've got the lovely McLaren Cosworth M23 now, 3-litre V8 
screaming up the hill and such a beautiful sight. And again, as I mentioned earlier, such great livery as it sets the time of 54.63. That's impressive, isn't it? That is a good time, 54.6. Uh, just having a little look back um, to some of those other times. But uh, yeah, that is, that is certainly a, a fast one. And we've got some more Formula One cars. We've got a couple of Benettons that are doing this one as well. And uh, we're looking at Lorena McLaughlin in the Benetton B192. That was an interesting year, of course, for Michael Schumacher when he was driving uh, for Benetton and getting his first opportunity to take a victory on his way, of course, to becoming such a superstar of Formula One. Lorena's a, a very regular competitor here at the Festival of Speed. Yes, she is, and she does great jobs with keeping this car under control. You can see the sparks flashing up as she's full chat now across the finish line, stamping on the brakes. And I know that she really, really enjoys driving this car. It's her pride and joy. It's a wonderful opportunity, isn't it? And it must be something that you kind of aim for all year to make sure the car's in good shape for an event like this, which is so good to see. Um, now, the Porsche just coming over the line. So Max Moritz, who has just set a time of 55.59 in one of our historic Porsches. And we've got several of those uh, coming around now. Alex Ames is now heading up the hill with uh, one of the later cars that we've seen so much success over the years with their Le Mans history. And these are always very popular. Yeah, they are. And lovely, fa another famous livery. It's nice to see that many of these cars really try and keep their, their original livery as we see now, Harvey Stanley behind the wheel of the Jaguar there goes through Malcolm Ben. Yeah, this is the Tejero Jaguar, uh, a sort of modified version of what was a D-type. Um, in fact, at Goodwood, this had some interesting history. Uh, many, many years ago, um, in 1959, at the, uh, the TT race, Martin Gregory uh, that felt something go wrong with the car and leapt out before it actually hit something. It was well, rebuilt. That was good, that was good uh, timing, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. In those days, drivers used to be able to do that, didn't they? They used to be able to leap out of cars. They had no seatbelts, of course, and sometimes it was the safer thing to do. Uh, 59.65, very, very uh, good run up there in the Tejero Jaguar from 1959. Yeah, and steaming up not far behind soon will shortly be the Lola. There it is on your screen, the Lola T160. The 1968 8.4 litre V8. Yeah, and Marcus Black. And listen to that sound. This is a Can Am car, which means American engines, and it has that characteristic sound. Yeah, it certainly does, with again with another famous livery on board. And it was fourth in Mid Ohio back in the 1970 as it steams past our commentary box and the crowd get. As some of them covering their ears, I can see out of our company box window just from the sheer sound of this Lola. Yeah, we've got plenty of the can -Am cars here this weekend. And uh, Lola was a very successful manufacturer of all sorts of cars at different levels. Uh, Formula One as well was all part of that too. Uh, let's just see what Marcus Black manages to do in this 1968 car. It's one of the earlier of the can -Am cars, 60.2 seconds. Respectable indeed and uh, another run has been done, 8.3 litres. Now, here we go, we're back with the Hyundai Ioniq 5N, and this, uh, this is quite a very modern machine, so you're going to the very latest type of machine where it's all electric, but they've built it to give driver a real feel for what it's like going at speed. Yeah, exactly, the N standing for Nürburgring as well, and we got a great demonstration earlier on in the weekend of this car steaming out the first time we're seeing it here as it storms uphill very quietly and jumping on the brace abs is kicking in getting ever so close to to the bales there on the left hand side and it's going to come up now to go across the finish line won't be the fastest time we're going to see today but also a fairly respectable time I must say, of a yeah. 54.2. That is pretty respectable, as you say. I mean, under 50 is the real top level, but that is that is a good time. Oh, I love this, the Mini. Nick Swift in the Mini. Uh, Nick is a um, multiple Mini racer. His dad, he, he grew up with Minis in his life. He, uh, I know uh, he has photographs of him as a kid sitting on the bonnet of a car that was just like this, but uh, he's, he's had it rebuilt. It's brilliant. He rebuilds cars now and comes up with great engines. Isn't it lovely? It is brilliant, wonderful. 1.3 litre, four-cylinder engine. And actually, these minis are quite a highlight, I would say, of the, of the revival 
and the, the members meet and they often quite take it to their their rivals so we'll see nick and oh, i just love what a shot this is ben of the the mini coming up now actually moving at a pretty swift pace getting sideways as nick does through Balkan corner and heading up the hill now nick's done a lot of winning it good with uh, whether it's up here um and he's certainly done it at the circuit many, many times. Many events that have been raced around the circuit. He's been um, impressed with uh, the John Whitmore Trophy in 2021, the Revival, for example. He won that. Uh, clearly, he doesn't have the pace in the Mini to be the fastest up the hill climb. That's a bit of a different story, but it's still a great fun thing. 59.17 seconds, the pace that he sets. Yeah, very impressive, really. Pace for the little Mini which was built in 1965, so good job. Now, here we go, Ben. We've Fred Shepard, yeah. Fred, Fred uh, he loves coming to Goodwood as well, part of the family that have been coming to Goodwood for many years, and he's in the 5-litre V8 Ford Mustang Boss 302 from 1970. And this were the sort of cars, it wasn't a NASCAR, this is a, a sort of car that raced in British, uh, well, it wasn't called British Touring Cars then, but British Saloon Car Championship, and they were winning many, many races. Sometimes they were the class victories, and sometimes you could win a different class. It's lovely to see. Yeah, it is, and the, just the sound of that engine. Fred, full pedal to the metal as he steams up, maybe a slight lift at the top of the hill there as he brings it now across the line to set 59.07. Yeah, that's that's interesting, actually, because uh, Mike Whitaker had just gone up just ahead of him in the Ford Capri, and Mike was actually a fraction faster. <laughs> it's quite interesting that, uh, uh, that those cars from the 1970s, the Capri was a little bit younger, not hugely different. Lovely to see Benoit Trelouillet in the Ford Escort Cosworth. Benoit Trelouillet loves this uh, his festival of speed. He's always rapid here. And 52.4. That's a good time. That's a very, very good time isn't it we all know the escort cosworth's massively powerful and uh, he's a great driver tremendously talented with a huge heritage of top level motorsport now we see the sunbeat <laughs> tourist trophy so some slightly different and this is what i love about the shootout we can go from you could go for your ford escort your mustang and now we're on to the sunbeam tourist trophy won't be setting you can have purple sectors but still not easy to drive one of these if, you, if you're trying just to even keep it on the black stuff yeah that's right and uh, remember when these were raced uh, when they were originally out in the 1920s no crash helmets were worn then of course it, we always think about you know the safety side very no different seat story belts either. no and they, well, they still don't have seat belts but they do have to wear the crash helmets don't they <laughs> they're still allowed not to wear seat belts but uh, it does seem a bit strange this this sunbeam uh, tourist trophy car actually was quite undersized in terms of its engine size and yet had a lot of success so it started to teach manufacturers you didn't always need to put aero engines in it's only a, a three and a 3.3 liter engine 87.66 seconds very respectable and uh, i think that was a fun run once again for nicholas Pellet. yeah and not far behind will be archie collins and if any of you were at the members meeting you would have seen him racing around and actually pretty competitive as i said very competitive racing between these old cars yeah, definitely. There were three of these entered in the French Grand Prix in 1907. Yeah, that's how old it is, 1907. Uh, they didn't actually win that Grand Prix. They did the following year, but uh, their best finish was 10th. They had, uh, I think, quite a few different issues. It's lovely to see the youngster, though, Archie Collins, getting into doing some runs up the hill in, in a car like this. It sounds wonderful. And he's, he's got some great confidence, I think, now. We're going to have to compare, because his dad, Ben, is due. Uh, we'll have to compare their, their times. Yeah, no, and it's lovely to see him going up. He's almost got someone like you know, almost the passenger is acting a bit like a, a sidecar driver or, or, or rider as such, really leaning to try and help Archie manoeuvre this Mercedes up the hill. Only 17 years old, and here he is about to cross the line uh, to put in another wonderful display. And that was great stuff from Archie. 79.9 seconds. Uh, of course, uh, I think that's actually a good effort with some of the other pre-war cars that we've seen. Not quite as rapid as that. Uh, now, there's Ben Collings. So, Ben, actually, I thought he was going to be in the, the other Mercedes, but no, he's in the Alfa Romeo P3. So this is likely to be faster because it was uh, some years later and it was incredibly successful at its time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah so 1934, 3.2 litre, straight eight supercharged 
and it was great to see these two racing each other back at the members meeting so yeah well, i'm sure they won't be bothered about times but deep down maybe <laughs> they will say well hang on dad i went slightly faster than you up the hill but we shall see well let's see your dad's got the faster car i would have to say well there we go that's archie's excuse straight away <laughs> so we shall see um uh, but i think yeah i mean ben is always uh, i mean he's part of the family at goodwood so uh he knows how to go up this hill very very effectively indeed and we shall see when he comes over the line. And uh, as I say, this Alfa Romeo that was so successful in the 1930s in Grand Prix, they had multiple wins in 1932, 1933, and even more. I believe in 1934, they won something like 15 big events. Amazing. 67.93, yep. So he has won the, the family battle there, Alice. <laughs> Oh, next time, Archie, next time. Just get him if you're going to be racing him at uh, Revival in September. Quite right, yeah. So next up, uh, Pat Blakeney-Edwards going up the hill and uh, some of the other older cars. This is the Sunbeam V12 Tiger. So this was a car that was kind of created for land speed records, but then also for racing. That was a, a time when you might do both, a bit of racing and records in a straight line. And uh, Henry Seagrave, who was a famous land speed record uh, driver, he, he drove this. That's a good time. Pat Blakeney Edwards is always rapid here. Yeah, it certainly is. And we've got uh, another Julian Majou as well. If anyone saw that great race at the members' yeah. meeting, that uh, just missing out on the win just because he quite didn't have the straight line speed to his rivals. But there we can see on screen. He's, al he's always spectacular here. Yes, he certainly is. He's always making plenty of corrections behind the wheel so i'm actually quite intrigued to see what sort of time he sets here yeah i think you know one of the older cars this could be one of the faster times let's just see 65.4 that's quicker than pat blakeney edwards just did i think yeah ben collins did 67 so of those 1930s cars there i think as you say that he may well win that class yeah and now we're, we're having a little look at the the record holder and it was done by this man max chilton and look at the speed of the torches <laughs> off the line yeah it is astonishing seeing that pace that it has off the line uh, and the, the, that smoke that you're getting out the back don't worry that's not exhaust smoke that is air that is being sucked up from underneath and thrown out of the fan at the back isn't it yeah and you know that max chilton said that he was going to be taking it slowly up the hill yeah. I think that might have been somewhat a lot. It really looks like he is giving it absolutely everything as he's steaming up the hill. So, yeah, that's really interesting that he's going at a good pace up the hill here. Uh, Max Chill took a new record, and uh, he is about to come over the line. And uh, you notice the clock has just come off our screens, and as I'm looking at our timing screen, it's saying, demo, demo. It's not to be timed. Oh. So it was a demo. It doesn't. It doesn't count as a as a timed uh, performance. So I wonder if he was timing it himself or not, because he would be quite intrigued. Wouldn't yeah, he? But I'm sure. He, actually, <laughs> when we had the clock on the screen, I was thinking, hang on a second. It looks pretty, pretty fast. But uh, this is just a demo, just to show what the car can do. I mean, we already knew what it can do. And I think, actually, if he was to go up the hill again, <laughs> I would be surprised if that record would be would be beaten, so uh, maybe we'll have to say to Max, come on, try and put it in to do do another record next year. It's lovely to see it again, though, because they're stunning what he did last year. And, and this car itself, and they're building uh, you know, for customers some of these special McMurtrys. Uh, they, that, it's an electric car that really does excite you, and, and we've seen what it's done in the past, and he's just put on a little demonstration for us once again. Well, I do hope you've been enjoying the shootout, we can uh, take a little look back at some of the highlights of some of those brilliant performances in such a variety of cars, uh, some great drivers at all different levels, whether it's rallying or racing, um, and cars that have four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, electric motors, high power, low power, some Formula One cars from the past, and there, a glimpse of the car that actually set the outright pace. Yeah, and we said, didn't we, at the start, that we thought that one of, that was going to be one of the cars setting the pace, and we got that correct. As we see, Michael Lyons actually setting a very, very impressive lap time for, personally, I think, in, in that old, beautiful McLaren. Yeah, Adam Smalley was very quick as ever, and uh, right up there in the battle for the top in the order. I'd love to see him one day in another car here. I mean, he's a Porsche driver very much, but he needs... Put him in a supercar here, and I think he could be a major contender 
for the fastest. We saw the rally cars, they were exciting to watch. They didn't have quite the advantage they had in the wet, though, the other day. No, they didn't, and it'd be interesting if it was wet, but uh, we see Jake Hill as well going up the hill. And again, a very impressive time from him. Yes, it was. No doubt about it, Jake Hill. One day, I think he could well end up winning this. We shall see. But Rory Butcher, his rival in touring cars, he was having fun too. And some big smiles once Hill. And I love this run from Travis Pastrana. I have to say, <laughs> that was one of my favourites. Do you know what? Maybe if he wasn't so sideways, he might have actually set the fastest outright time. He just seemed to be always sideways going up the hill. Well, it was great to watch Travis there. Um, but it was also fun to see Max Chilton do that final demo. And he's up at the top talking to Ed Foster. Max, after setting that record time last year, it's fantastic to see you both back here this year doing a demonstration. But your eyes must have flashed, your, your life must have flashed before your eyes as you went into Malcolm there. Yeah, that was um, obviously the first dry run of the weekend. We're not here for the time trial, but um, as we're now turned this into an actual production car and a track car that people can buy, we wanted to show what it can do. Um, and the, the new car that we're actually saying is quicker than that. And that was blisteringly fast. I have a feeling that was probably faster than last year, but it was a joy. Um, I love putting on the, sh you know, the, the, the show for the crowd. You can see the, the crowd sort of gasping and then you get the round of applause at the end. So it's an honor to be back here. I did have a bit of a lock up, so I was definitely um, sort of on the, on, the, on the limit of the thing, but hopefully everyone can see what this new technology can do. Um, and it's a great to be a part of a British brand, McMurtry. We chatted last year and you said that you, you've led the Indy 500 and this was more nerve wracking. Honestly, my heart rate right now is probably come down to about 160, but when I was coming up that hill, it was buzzing. Um, it's just an amazing place. I love it. It's, I'm passionate about it. Last year was very nerve wracking. That run was probably more nerve wracking because we had no practice. So when you just get sent out there, you'd have no idea if there's mud or oil across the track, but um, it, was, it was great and uh, loved every minute of it. And so this afternoon, I think we've got one more run. Um, I'll probably turn the traction control off this time and some, see how much smoke this thing can create because it's got a lot of power, a thousand horsepower, straight to the rear wheels creates a lot of smoke. Well, we can't wait. Cheers, Max. Thank you so much. Again, here we are at the Goodwood Festival of Speed on Sunday shootout. And my word, David, what a shootout it was. I think I heard you say you were watching through your fingers. So was I. That McLaren Solos with Marcin, Marvin Kirchhofer at the wheel. Just sublime, wasn't it? Unbelievable. I mean, an unbelievable car, brand new, fresh out of the box, but also he's never been here before. And, you know, I just think that's a real testament to how good his drive was and the car. It's not only, you know, take the brave pills for this track, <laughs> but you have to be, it's a very technical track. So, uh, you know, it's, it's an incredible result, uh, but, you know, that plus Travis, I mean, oh. if you got extra points for pleasing the crowd, then, you know, he, he's up there as well. And it's amazing the difference, uh, certainly aesthetically, between those two cars as well. You had the sort of F1 almost road car in the McLaren Solis and then the sort of 1983 Subaru. It, it was just so different. And that's part of the magic of Goodwood, of the Festival of Speed. And indeed, the Travis Pastrana, of the way that he could just send it up that hill. And he knows how to please a crowd, doesn't he? Unbelievable. And also the other cars, you know, we had old F1 cars there. We had Jake Hill in a very old Nissan Skyline. Just absolutely nothing. Did, never going to leave anything left. And then Adam Smalley, he was one of my tips. Got very close in the Porsche as well. So just an amazing array of cars. And, and they all go so close at the end. But, you know, full credit to Marvin in the, uh, in the McLaren. Yeah, Marvin definitely uh, read the script, didn't he? 60 years of McLaren, I'll tell you what, I'll take the brand new McLaren Solis straight out the box, straight up the hill and win it. Why not?